Welcome back. Yes, you can be part of this conversation by calling us on 070-3904-4583. The number again is 070-3904-4583. Call us and you can call us to ask questions, you can call us to contribute. We have in the studio with us today, Chief Abel Sievo, who is one of the frontliners in uh, the race to succeed Governor Ifai Okoa. All right, while... Uh, Chief Abel Isabel, could you please tell us what motivated you to aspire to succeed Governor Ifan Yokoa? Having worked in the service and worked closely with our amiable Governor, Senator Dr. Arthur Ifan Yokoa, and seeing the good things he's doing, I feel we should not just allow any person to come there to take over from him because we have to continue the good work. If he's doing well, we should have somebody that we also do well, taking over from him. Somebody with, with intellect, somebody that can deliver the goods. All right, somebody that can, and, and, and that, that person you believe is Ologo Ibel Esiebo? Yes. <laughs> All right, could you please give us a peep into your manifesto? Because I know that your manifesto uh, will be the vehicle to which you are going to convey the better Delta State that you are agitating for? Yes. I have, <coughs> together with my team, created a very, very robust manifesto that would take Delta State to the very, very highest echelon among all our states, all the states of the Federation. You see, our programs are predicated on the need to industrialize Delta State, geared towards the provision of employment opportunities for our teaming youths. You see, our youths finish school, graduate from university, and stay home three, four, five, six, seven, some even up to ten years without job. And in the process, they they branch out to do things that are not palatable to society. So we want to engage them constructively in industry. We want to create industry in each of the three central districts every year for for the four years of the administration if we do this we would have created a synergy between agriculture because there are some there are some industries that may be agro-based there are some that may be te technology based so we have a synergy that a seamless flow between our youth agriculture and production we want to do that. Then another aspect of our industrialization program is that we will interface with anybody, any owner of any closed down industry, any moribund industry in Delta State that is not producing now. We want to bring them back on stream so that they too can contribute towards the provision of employment product, uh, opportunities for our youths. For instance, if we look at our landscape, you will see you see ATMP, for instance, in Saple. You see Eternit in the same Saple. You see the salt factory in uh, Ogara. Mm -hmm. You see the shrimps in o Ogara too. You come to worry. You have the Limka Worry Botley Company here. We have uh, Delta Timber Industry in Brutu. We, we have we have Bende Glass in Ugeli. We have Olo Cold Drinks, Super Brew, Sparkling Drinks, and they are scattered across the state. If we bring all these companies back on stream and let them join in our employment generation mantra, I think Delta State will become a very, very robust state contributing towards our national GDP. Well, so thank you very much. I, I really need to stop you here because I know that uh, as Auditor General, the brilliance is just uh, there. It would go on and on. All right, but uh, you, you, you were a civil servant and uh, for, for 31 years before you retired from the yeah. civil service. Uh, so you, you, you are regarded among the politicians as a greenhorn. Will this not affect your chances in, in, in the elections? I don't think so. Because as a civil servant, I also was a political human being. I am a political human being and interact, inter, interfaced with the political class. Uh, I cannot say I don't know the politicians because as Auditor General, you must 
uh, mingle with the chairman of the councils, you must mingle with the councillors, you must mingle with the with the civil servants in the local government. And the local government be the grassroots of our governmental structure is somewhere it's like a breeding ground for future leaders. Look at for instance now, we have our governor who was the secretary to local government. He was chairman of a local government before he came to the state to become commissioner, SSG and senator and the rest. So I think I am well grounded to 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 lead well. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Let's look at the. I, I know that you are a member of the PDP, as so as you are running under uh, the PDP umbrella. Uh, the, the, what's your take on this? The yours from Delta South are laying claim to the governorship seat of the state. Uh, and you are from Delta Central. Delta Central says it is their turn, but the yours are saying it is their turn. Uh, what's your take on this? Because you are running under the PDP. Yes, I think we should allow equity to reign. Nobody should bully any central district. For me, as a personal opinion, I think it is the turn of Delta Central. Having waited 16 years for South and North, I think they should not be deprived. If we look at the election campaigns of His Excellency in 2014-2015, uh, it ran under equity that it was the turn of Anyoma Delta North to produce the governor. That is equity. I think equity demands that it is the turn of Central. I don't uh, see any reason why anybody should go against it. Wait and soon it will get to your turn. Maybe we are looking at it from the past perspective that we are will be too old by then. But I think our children should be given opportunities to to also rule, to lead. All right, Dan, why did you, because I know that you are one of the aspirants that refuse to subject yourself to the screening of DC23 lobby group, that Data Center, uh, Center 2023 lobby group. Why did you refuse uh, to subject yourself under their screening? Sir? Originally, they gave the impression that the Excellency was behind what they were doing. So people thought that yes it is a credible thing to do but having looked at the handwriting on the wall and we saw the hand of jacob and uh, it's against his i said no and when you see the composition of these committees to screen you know there can only be one answer they worked from answer to question they already have a destination so we cannot say we should subject ourselves when you know the outcome, what the outcome will be. Right, thank you. But, but don't you think that the large numbers of aspirants from Delta Central, Central District, we have fed the chances of the district in producing a candidate of the party? I think to aspire is a personal struggle. And democracy allows aspirations if anybody wants to aspire let him aspire this system we sift them out eventually we'll get the candidate if look at 2014 2015 elections we had a situation where we had so many persons from delta north aspiring to the governorship of the state but the system see true of senator dr atoifan yokoa as the governor it did not deprive the north of the governorship of the state. All right, all right, thank you very much. I, I, I know that elections take money as, 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 as a civil servant or as a retired civil servant. Do you have the financial muscle to wrestle in this election? I think that should be left to me to decide. But I think we are capable. We are capable. All right. They are capable. Let's look at this. Uh, politicians, when they don't get the party's ticket, they usually decamp. If, if, if eventually, if paradventure, let's use that word, if paradventure, you don't get the ticket, is there any you want to decamp to? No. I don't think that is right. Somebody must be a winner. Somebody must be a loser.
if you win good everybody collapse their structures into your team and everybody move ahead to deliver the party at the general elections so if you lose and you go to another party uh, that's not gamesmanship i don't think it's fair enough it's nice enough no it's not good all right, let, let, let's look at this argument within the Delta Central Centurion District that Ethiopia Federal Constituency has produced the governor as the person of Chief James Onanefe Mori and also the Ugele uh, Federal Constituency, the Ugele Udo Federal Constituency have produced at uh, Onogu Filisibru and now it is the turn of the Okwe. And you are from uh, Ethiopia's local government, you are from Ethiopia Federal Constituency. Is it now fair, a uh, point of equity for you to want to run? Or what, what's your take on this? I feel the zoning. Nobody has said it is zoned to Okbe or Uye or Saple. What they are saying is zoned to Central. Let me take your mind back to His Excellency Olushe Gobasanjo. He was he was a president from the Southwest. Now we have a situation where Osi Banjo, the vice president, from the same state with him. And Tunubu from Lagos, the same southwest, with him, they are jostling for the ticket. Mm. I don't think because somebody came from their place that they should be deprived. The mm. same way I think that I should not be this deprived. I should be allowed to aspire. Let the system throw up the best candidate. So, so how, how prepared are you for this for the, for the primaries? Because it's just a few months from now. I know. I'm very well prepared. I should not give up my joker outside of mm. i am mm. i'm capable we are ready so what, what, what's your word to delta because some of them they're like ah the aspirants are much chief table is able what was your word to them i have previously said my manifesto is predicated on the delivery of industries but i will also say that as much as possible we will build on the legacies of the present administration in terms of the deliverable deliverables we are seeing. We are seeing infrastructure being delivered. We are seeing empowerment programs being delivered. Yeah. So if we come in, we are not going to throw those away because society needs infrastructure. Society needs provision of jobs and employment opportunities for everybody. So when we come in, we will build on whatever we meet on ground and ensure that Deltans get it better. All right, so ensure Deltans get it better. As uh, We'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll still have uh, Chief Eben Isabel with us here. Let's take a break. Chief Abel Esebo, and uh, we want to get his final words before we let him go. He has a very busy schedule. In spite of his busy schedule, uh, I must commend him for his time. He came here before time, and we had to shift the program just to suit him because uh, he came before time. He's a cost in those oh, Thank you very much for that. Very punctual. All right, one hour before the time. All right, let me just take this call before we, 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 we take your final so, Hello. Hello, good morning. Yes, you are. You are. Okay, could, could you please just call again? The, the, the sound is a little bit uh, low. 
All right. So uh, your, before we take this question, we'll allow this caller to call. But what was what's your final uh, thoughts on your final take on what uh, I generally? want to I want to thank Deltans for the confidence they have on us. You see, at our last rally in Asaba, the followership of Chief Ebele Sebo was massive. And it's, it sends a signal that this is something good that is coming to Delta State. And I want to assure you that our world will be our bond. We have promised delivery of industries to Deltans. We will make sure we get it right. And we want to have an all-inclusive government that you and I will take part in. Every Delta will be carried along. Every leader will be carried along. Every youth will be carried along. Every uh, woman leader will be carried along. So we'll try. Our traditional institutions will be brought in. Our community development associations will be brought in. Everybody will have a feel of the state. It's your state. It's my state. Get the best candidate to get the job done. Thank you.